Johnny here with Sense and Math, and in this video we're going to be talking about the hyperbolic functions. I'm just going to quickly introduce them, explain what they are, what they look like, and then I like this lecture because it's good, it's fun, and then it's nice and easy when we start to talk about the calculus. The derivatives are fun, the integrals are fun, it's a good little review day. So, and before I can get started on talking about the hyperbolic functions, let me quickly remind you about the trig functions. Trig defines cosine and sine as the respective distances from the x and y axes, corresponding to some given angle theta for points on a unit circle. That is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. So starting at the x-axis, we draw our angle, that's our theta, draw a ray slicing through space, and where it intersects the unit circle we have an x value and a y value. We call that x distance away from the y-axis cosine, and the y distance away from the x-axis sine. And We have a whole class on trigonometry where we play around with those values and those graphs. And theta in trig world has um, many definitions. One, theta just represents that angle in radian measure. So in a trig course, we step away from the degrees and we start to measure angles in radians. That central angle theta also represents the arc that's been cut away by that ray. So if this ray cuts through this point and continues on, we have this little arc between the x-axis and that point. That arc length is equal to the measure of that central angle theta. And then also that sector, the shaded area here, twice that area equals theta. Alright, so we played around with that intrigue. And the hyperbolic functions are very similar, but instead of using a unit circle, we use a unit hyperbola to define hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. So I just say here, likewise we define hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine as the respective distances from the x and y axes corresponding to again some given angle theta for points on the hyperbola x squared minus y squared equals 1. I kind of got it graphed here. And so I have the hyperbola. The, the unit hyperbola here is instead of drawing a circle with radius 1, you draw a fundamental rectangle, or in this case a square, from the center of the hyperbola up 1 and right 1. So you have this square with you know, like two distance there and two distance there. And every point on the hyperbola is some, of course, x and y value, where the x value is the hyperbolic cosine of that given angle, and the y value is hyperbolic sine of that given angle. And this shaded area, which has got a little bit of an arc to it, it's this arc on the hyperbola, a straight line to the center. This shaded area doubled is that theta. All right, so that's uh, hyperbolic functions, sine and cosine. Now, the definitions are nice and easy to maybe memorize or just look at. I have them written above me. But here we have maybe a new notation. This is hyperbolic sine. It's sine with an H following it. And I pronounce that cinch, like I'm going to pinch you. It's cinch. So hyperbolic sine is defined as e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Hyperbolic cosine, I pronounce kosh, like posh, but kosh, it's defined as the sum of e to the x and e to the negative x over 2. With these definitions, um, their derivatives and their integrals are quite easy and fun to play with. Before I move on to calculus, though, just while we're on hyperbolic functions. The rest of the hyperbolic uh, functions 
are defined just like you would in a trig course. So if I wanted to find hyperbolic tangent, well, I would just place the sine value over the cosine value, just like back in trig. In fact, let's do that. So I'm just saying here, we define the remaining trig function or hyperbolic functions. similar to the trig counterparts. So hyperbolic tangent of x would just simply be hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. And we can find it. I'm just going to use the definitions. So Hyperbolic sine is defined right above me. It is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. And that's being divided by cosh, which is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. And I can do some simplification. I could multiply by 2 over 2 just reducing those twos, leaving me with, in the numerator, e to the x minus e to the negative x, and in the denominator, their sum. And I'm looking at hyperbolic tangent. So if you needed cosecant, you would, of course, just take the reciprocal of sine. So hyperbolic cosecant, it's just the reciprocal of hyperbolic sine. Cosecant sine, yeah. All right, let's take a look at these graphs. We're not going to be expected to graph these in this course, but let's look at them. They're quite interesting. So I'm going to move over to Desmos. That's not what I want you to see. And then there we go. I'm going to type in first hyperbolic cosine. And so Desmos even knows what uh, the hyperbolic co uh, notation is. So notice it kind of looks like a parabola that starts at 1 and then goes up. It's not a parabola. It's a hyperbolic cosine. So it's more of that hyperbola shape, but it's hyperbolic cosine. Looks like that. Let's get hyperbolic sine up here. Cinch. Okay, so it oh it looks very similar on the right, but it goes through the origin and then it kind of goes up and it, it almost mirrors, they almost touch there in quadrant one. Now what's interesting about the these two graphs is they have that same like they're trying to go to that same spot, right? Well that's an asymptote. And the asymptote, let me graph that, is one half. e to the x. So notice the blue is e, one half e to the x and both the hyperbolic cosine is approaching the blue e to the x and the hyperbolic sine is approaching that one half e to the x. One's coming at it from the left, one's coming at it from the right. But they're both approaching that one half e to the x. It's acting as a nonlinear asymptote. The function is trying to emulate that e to the x graph. All right, if I let's just plug in a negative one of those because I think that's what's going on on the left hand side of the hyperbolic cosine. All right, there's there's one half e to the negative x in this darker blue, maybe purple color. So notice the hyperbolic cosine has two nonlinear asymptotes that it is approaching. I bet hyperbolic cosine has some sort of negative one down here. All right, but I just wanted you to see the graphs, and I wanted you to see those uh, nonlinear asymptotes. All right. Oh, now, interestingly, this 
hyperbolic cosine, so the black graph. Let me just get rid of, the other, get rid of these other two. This hyperbolic cosine um, we call a catenary, and there's a famous artist from, I think, Spain named Gaudi who used these catenaries in um, excess. So you know, you may know the verb or the uh, descriptive word Gaudi. Like if you see a woman with just too many pearls or there's, I don't know, too much gold on something, we might say it's like Gaudi. Well, that's after the artist Gaudi who used things in excess. And one of them was these catenaries. So I have some pictures here. This, he just has hanging chains and they form this hyperbolic cosine shape. So if you take a string or a chain and you just hold the ends and you let gravity pull down that chain, that is a catenary. That is a, the shape of a hyperbolic cosine. So here he, he played with it. He's got chains here. And then if you just take that gravity, that shape, and flip it up, you can make these arches. And here he is. Oh yeah. Using them as just arches through a building. And it's, there's excessive amounts, as you can see. And, um, now this shape is also pretty cool for bridges. Because if you take that catenary shape or the hyperbolic cosine and make a bridge out of it, everywhere on that bridge, even the center point, it has uniform, um, load. So if, even if you're standing in the center, it's like you're standing over there, like that weight is evenly distributed. So they're very good bridges if you want to, you know, walk over them or drive over them or something. All right. So there's, there they are, like in real, in the real world. Nice arches, bridges, cool hanging shapes that you've all seen. It's a catenary. That's a hyperbolic cosine. All right. Let's move on to some calculus. Now that we have the definitions and we have like a picture in mind, let's do some calculus with them. First things first, let's do some Cal 1. Let's do some derivatives. Let's say I want to go off and find the derivative of hyperbolic cosine. Now the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but how is that, or is that similar to the hyperbolic cosine? Well, I'm going to use the definition of cosine to just replace cosine in terms of e to the x. So I instead want to take the derivative of e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. That's how we define cosh. Oh, well, this one-half coefficient or constant can be pulled out of the derivative process. And derivatives are linear, meaning I can take this sum and bust it up into two separate derivatives. So I simply have one half times the derivative of e to the x plus the derivative of e to the negative x. And we know those derivatives. e is nice. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of e to the negative x is a negative e to the negative x. So my final answer, I'll just clean this up a bit, is e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. And doesn't that look familiar? It's written above me as cinch, or the hyperbolic sine. So the derivative of cosine is a positive hyperbolic sine. Oh. I claim you can now try this one on your own. 
let's go off and try to find the derivative of cinch. I kind of have an educated guess that it's going to be related to hyperbolic cosine, but is it going to be positive, negative? Go through the motions, pause the video, and try this on your own. So going through very similarly, I just used the definition to rewrite cinch in this e of x or e to the x definition. Derivatives are nice and easy dealing with e to the x and I get a positive hyperbolic cosine. So the derivative of cosh is cinch and the derivative of cinch is cosh. Nice and easy. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a very relaxed, uh, very nice good review type uh, lecture. Just fun. Now, let's see. Yeah, I want to talk about next the integrals. I think we can do them very similarly, but I'll walk through the first one. If I want to integrate hyperbolic cosine, well, I think I'm just going to have to use the definition to rewrite it in that e to the x um, terms. So I'm integrating e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. Integration is very similar to differentiation. They're both linear operators. So I can separate the integrals into 2 and I can pull out the 1 half. So I have 1 half times the integral of e to the x plus the integral of e to the negative x. I know these integrals. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. The integral of e to the negative x is a negative e to the negative x. I guess there's a plus c hanging around. Uh, lo and behold, we've just got cinch again. So the integral of cosh is also cinch. So the derivative of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine. The integral of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine. All right, let's try that one more time. Pause the video and see if you can integrate cinch. Integrating cinch, I get cosh. So there's no negativity dealing with the hyperbolics. The derivative of Regular cosine is a negative sign, but that doesn't seem to happen with the integrating and the derivative of the hyperbolic. Those they just remain positive. Cosh is cinch and cinch is cosh. Both taking the derivative and integrating. That's that's kind of nice and easy, kind of nice and fun. Alright. Well, this hyperbolic stuff reminds me a lot of trig. So let's see if we can do some old like verifications. Remember those? I'd like to verify some hyperbolic identities. Let's try this one. I want to verify that cosh squared of x minus cinch squared of x sums up or is equal to 1. The difference is 1. So this is old school verifications where you kind of pick one side of the equation to manipulate and you just keep manipulating, justify each step with either an identity or some sort of algebra 
until the left hand side or this one side looks exactly like the other. So you don't manipulate one side, you only manipulate one. Alright, so I don't know much about Kosh, but I do know its definition. So I think I'm going to spend a step to just rewrite the definition of cosine, hyperbolic cosine and the definition of hyperbolic sine. So I'm just going to write down definitions. So if I have cosh squared, then that must mean I've got cosh being squared. So I'm just going to rewrite this. Cosh is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2, and that value is being squared. From that, I'm subtracting, and I have cinch squared. Well, that's just e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 squared. I'm going to replace the 1 with a RHS, that's just right hand side. It helps me remember not to touch the 1. All right. Uh, well, I can foil out those binomials up top and I can multiply a half times itself. In fact, I may just rewrite this so I can help see this, help myself see what's going on there. This is e to the x plus e to the negative x times itself. So I just, I need to do some distribution and I'm writing it down to help me like visualize what I'm about to multiply. So my justification there is, uh, I'm just rewriting, I guess you could say expanding. All right, now I think I can distribute. You may want to call that foiling, because they're just binomials. But I should have e to the x times e to the x. Well, when you have the same base, you simply add the exponents. So x plus x is 2x. So I have e to the 2x. Now I'm going to have a one of those and another one of those. So I'm going to have two of these, which is e to the x times e to the negative x. Again, we're just adding the exponents. 1x minus 1x is going to be 0. Similarly, e to the 2x, I'm going to have minus 2 e to the 0, which is, that's just 1. And then I have a plus e to the negative 2x over here. I could say multiply, I'm using distribute, you could say FOIL. All right. Now, they already have a common denominator, so I can do this subtraction. Now, I am subtracting all three of these coefficient or numerators. So e to the 2x minus e to the 2x, these will cancel each other out. They cancel to zero. This is simply 2 minus a negative 2, so it's going to become 4. And then e to the negative 2x minus itself, these will cancel to zero. So I'm just adding like terms, you could say canceling, but I'm going to get 4 over 4 equals 1. One last step, uh, you could divide, reduce, 1 equals 1. Because the left hand side is identical to the right hand side, I'm finished. So I'm going to put a little black box, QED, I'm, I've done it. I have shown that the difference of hyperbolic cosine squared and sine, hyperbolic sine squared is always going to be 1. Fun. So you may see some verifications in the homework.
just to remind you of those. Oh, I do have another one here. Let's do this one. I don't know, it's like a double angle for the hyperbolic sine. We're trying to verify that the double angle is 2 times cinch cosh. Oh, this is exactly like the double angle for sine. Sine double angle is 2 sine cosine. So yeah, this is it must be the same for the hyperbolic as well, but I need to verify this. All right, I'm not sure which side I want to play with, but I think I'm going to come over here and just do the exact same thing I did last time. Shove in the definition for cinch and the definition for cosh. So I'm just using the definitions. Cinch is the difference and cosh is the sum. And I could multiply like I did last time. I think I'll do that. So up top I'm going to have e to the x times itself. That's e to the 2x. Plus one of those and then minus one of those. So this is a perfect square trinomial. Those two are going to cancel, cancel each other out. And then I have minus e to the negative 2x. And this is going to be over a 4. Okay, well, the 2 and the 4 reduce to 1 half. Looking good. And then we just have to make sense of this. That does look a whole lot like the hyperbolic sine. It's just that all of those powers have been doubled, which I think is exactly that. Let me walk through that maybe. So I'm not supposed to be touching the right hand side, but I need to play with it just so I can see what it looks like. So I'm kind of going off to the side, I'm in a different color, I'm away from my proof. I just want to play around with what does hyperbolic sine uh, double angle, what does that mean? Well, I think that means you write down hyperbolic sine, but all the angles have been doubled. So let's just make sure about that. So hyperbolic sine is above me. So it's e to the not x, but you double it, minus e to the not negative x, but you double it, negative 2x, but it's still going to be over a 2. Okay, okay. So yes, that's exactly what we've got going on here. So I'm, I'm now comfortable saying, okay, yeah, this is clearly just the hyperbolic sine double angle sitting right there. All right, and I claim that is all you need to know uh, for the homework at least. So in the homework you'll be 
integrating some hyperbolic functions and you, and claim they're pretty simple. Use the definition. You're going to be dealing with these e to the x's, which are quite simple to do. You may have to use some old strategies like parts or um, u substitution, but I claim you have the knowledge. So uh, go get started on your homework.